All right, so here we are. We have five oak coyote here, and we're gonna start our planting process. So the first thing you wanna do, obviously, if you remember from the other video, there's gonna be a lot of redundant things from the other video. So if you've seen my first planting video, there are gonna be some repeats, but there we're gonna be definitely more thorough. We're gonna do some more steps and we're gonna be more detailed this time. So. Like I said, there'll be some repeats, but there's going to be some new stuff too. So from that video, you know, I always start with a notebook. Uh, it's basically just writing down all the components that you need to wire in, right? So on this engine, there are four cam solenoids. Uh, and that's really the only thing like on the front of the engine, besides maybe the alternator plug, there are eight coil packs for the ignition, eight injectors, obviously. There are four cam position sensors. There is a coolant temp and a crank stuck way down in there. And then there are two knock sensors that come out to this harness, which I don't think we'll be using at all. We'll just plug right in the knock sensors. And then this harness for the e-throttle we are going to repurpose a little bit of because uh, I can't find these connectors anywhere. So it's a bummer. Um, but no biggie. We'll, we'll sheath it up and we'll, you know, integrate it in the harness. and It'll be good to go. We'll just use a, a Deutsch connector down here. So those are the components that I'm going to be wiring in this thing. Um, there's Well, there's also um, a fuel pressure sensor. That will be in one of these rails that he has included and there's a map sensor three prong map sensor and then he also wants an oil pressure sensor to go down by the um possibly down here by this feed so possibly temperature as well so i'll be wiring kind of an extra harness for that um he's not really sure where he's going to put those so he's going to build his own little extension harness for that but the only things that are a pain is obviously the cam and crank sensors need to be shielded as well as the knock sensors. So that's quite a few shielded cables um, that we'll need to run in this harness. I'm gonna get all this stuff written down and then we are gonna go inside and just briefly go over the tools that I'll be using to construct this harness. Um, just so, you know, you're aware of what I'm using and that kind of stuff. Uh, and then we'll get to kind of breaking down the construction and figuring out what needs to go where and you know just uh keep trucking on so let me write this stuff down and we'll be inside okay real quick i'm just gonna go over how i start sketching this stuff out with my notebook so i have all the components here um you know and i continued on the next page um basically i just you know everything all the components in eight injectors eight, eight ignition coils cam sensors crank sensor coolant pressure map all that stuff then I, you know, have the number of wires, number of conductors, just list that out. Um, I have the wire size that I'm going to, I'm planning on using. So, you know, that can vary a bit depending on, you know, what type of component you're, you know, like the, the ignition coils, obviously you probably use an 18, although it does seem like 20 will suffice in this thing because it is such a short harness, but, um, you know, all that stuff, uh, then the voltage that it's going to be using. So, you know, if it's 12 volts, 12 volts, if it doesn't use voltage, like it's in a VR sensor, like the cams are yeah, obviously nothing, five volt sensors for the pressure sensors and stuff. Uh, amperage, I always put here too. Um, just if you, sometimes you have to calculate it out good, using good old, uh, Ohm's law here, V equals IR, um, voltage equals amperage times resistance. So you can format that however you need to, to calculate what you need to. Uh, for instance, I had to do that with these uh, cam solenoids, right? They sh they're supposed to measure five to 15 ohms. Um, and so if you, multi if you, if you, you know, divide the voltage 13.8-ish by that amount of resistance, you get anywhere from eight to 2.4 amps. So I had to, uh, you know, figure out what size gauge I need for those. Um, but basically, uh, I just sketch all that out, make sure I'm, you know, on, on square, that's kind of square one. Um, and then from there, I start 
running with the Link ECU connectors. So um, obviously each connector has its own things. Like for example, both the knock sensors are on the B connector. Um, all the cam and crank sensors will be on the A connector, right? So that's all formatting stuff. Like you gotta, you gotta make sure to take that into account because you can, you can start going crazy here, you know, with your, with your layups and how you're going to twist everything. And then you pull this out and you're like, oh wait, that's not really going to work because this one has to come out of this connector and that one has to come out of this connector. And you'll just have this big jumbled mess at the ECU and you don't want to do that. So uh, with this harness, it actually looks like I'm just going to keep the A and B loom separate um, because we are using two of these guys. So each one of these will go to one of these. Um, now I did end up like, so connector A, connector B, they actually both will pin out to 47 pins, which is exactly the number that's in here. Um, I probably will end up consolidating a few of the, you know, sensor grounds and uh, those sorts of things, just because, again, this is not a full motorsports harness, and it just leaves room for some spare pins in emergency sake. Um, so that's the other thing that, sorry, I just like to record against this wall. I feel like it's more aesthetic. Uh, <laughs> That's the other thing about building, for example, you know, if you are going to build a true sealed motorsports harness, right? Like, are they very reliable? Yes, absolutely. But stuff does happen, right? Fire, um, abrasion, right? Let's say the car is in a crash and part of the harness gets severed, um, you know, those kind of things, like, you kind of got to take into account for. So can you repair the harness or or get the harness to function again if you need it to for some reason? Uh, so, you know, because true, true motorsports, you know, if you're on a race team, if you're on a high-end WRC, F1, something crazy like that, if they have a damn, you know, if they have a crash or something they have spare harnesses built already. So they're just ready to go. They just un they just disconnect that harness, toss it on the bench, throw a new one in there, right? Most people like you and I are not gonna have that capability. So you might wanna consider, you know, maybe not building that, you know, to that level if you could actually come into situations like that. You might wanna consider, oh, maybe I shouldn't, seal this up all the way. Maybe I shouldn't use 100% of the pins because what if I have to quickly run another power? I, you know, just those kind of things, just to think through in your head and to really consider of, you know, your own capability, the car's, you know, capability, if it could be in an accident or, you know, all those kind of things are just important to think about when you're building something that's going to potentially, you know, be in a situation where it's damaged. So, uh, again, I like for, for this harness, we're not sealing it all up. It's not going to be thing. We're not going to be building a bunch of spare harnesses for it. So I'm probably going to leave a few extra pins out just in case, you know, for some reason something happens where he needs to run a couple more, you know, uh, grounds or powers or whatever. He can do that quickly, pretty quickly at the racetrack because everything's going to be pretty accessible and go back to racing and not, you know, just be done until he can, you know, build an entirely new harness for it. So that's that. So we are using a Link Extreme X ECU. This is the latest uh, Link Extreme version, the X versus the G4 Plus that they had before this. So that should be able to do everything we need to do. Uh, we got our various sensor connectors and everything here. Um, we got a couple different crimp tools for the different terminals, you know, for the factory style connectors and that stuff. Um, this is just a butt connector crimper. Um, two DMC tools. Obviously these are some of the most important ones to get if you're doing this kind of stuff. Um, we got both the turret head for the uh, mil spec connector terminals and also Deutsch connector terminals. Uh, we have the new race spec. Well, I should, I guess the 
this has been around for probably a little bit, but this is the new positioner for the Super Seal 1.0 uh, solid pins. So that's cool. Uh, we have two of these pressure sensors, ECU connectors, um, and then actually, um, you know, cut, side cuts, wire strippers. Um, we we're actually ordering another pair of these. Um, so another set of the bulkhead connectors uh, because we don't have anywhere near enough pins in this. Uh, this is 47 pins and we have about double that. So we're gonna get another one of these. It'll be nice and symmetrical. Um, like I said, again, this is not going to be like a full motorsport sealed harness. Um, so we're just using these boots and there'll be, you know, things, some various Deutsch, Toucan Lambdas, uh, the label printer. I got the old uh, Extreme pin out here, handy dandy notebook and just some various, you know, loops and um, butt connectors there. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing with. Um, now, zoom in. Uh, <laughs> there's definitely people who will see some of the tools on the table and they'll be like, well, you shouldn't be, you know, building these kind of harnesses if you don't have the very best tools, you know, um, or you're not truly doing it motorsports spec if you're not. And I get it. Like there are definitely higher quality tools than I own, right? Like there's probably better wire strippers. There's better flush cuts, you know, like, um, there's all kinds of things that you can get into, but at the end of the day, you know, with these kind of tools and, buying a used uh, DMC crimper and that kind of stuff, you can do 99.5% of what, you know, a true professional motorsports wiring harness is built. In my opinion, I'm sure there's going to be somebody in the comments below, you know, that's like, oh, what? that's not true. Okay. I mean, that's fine. Like, I respect that. I get it. But, you know, if you're doing this like I am, like for yourself and maybe for a couple of your buddies or, you know, a couple projects on the side where you can explain to the person, hey, this is, you know, like a really high quality wiring harness, but it's not like at some insane level, then yeah, absolutely. Um, again, if you're professional, then yeah, you should probably invest in, in all the top tier tools um, to use. So that's my two cents on that. Oh, and then we'll make a mock-up harness so we can get some links and stuff like that in and uh, get this thing coming together. Okay, so it's really bright right now. Uh, <laughs> we talked a little bit uh, way back in one of my other videos about uh, prototyping a mock-up harness. Uh, and basically all you need is like some cheap twine some electrical tape or some kind of tape to tape these together and something to cut the twine with. So what you want to do, if I can find the end of this thing, <laughs> which we'll see, uh, is basically just get all your lengths mocked up with twine. So you don't have to go and measure every length and write it down and have like a big, Let's see if I can get this thing out open here. There's the end. Cool. Um, it's a lot easier than just using a tape measure and trying to bend around corners and, you know, that kind of thing. You know, like trying to bend the tape measure in like a proper arc and all that. I mean, it gets, it gets really goofy. So, uh, what you want to do is pretty much start with the farthest away thing, which is, uh, well, actually it's going to be this cam sensor or the alternator or the oil pressure sending in. But the bulkhead connector is going to be basically right here on this car. Um, again, I wish I had the car. <laughs> But the engine is like the second best, better than I've ever other had. Uh, usually it's just me, you know, going and trying to get all the links off the car and then building everything in my house. So at least I have the engine here and I can actually build a string mock-up harness. Um, I did have to um, 
send the guy a extension harness for his crank angle sensor uh, on that other harness I built because it wasn't long enough. So again, it just the more the more accurate you can be, the better for sure because having obviously building a harness to this level and then having there be like extra length or you know something's too short it's just a big disappointment so i'm pretty stoked on getting to do a mock-up harness for this so again try and be be as accurate as you can um it does obviously get a little goofy because you know you don't necessarily have everything here like i don't have the exhaust manifold so uh, you know, I'm going to have to kind of adjust my harnessing based on, you know, where, what's going to be where, but, uh, essentially I can, I can still mock these up. Um, so let's get this oil pressure sensor here, a little shorter, start with the end where I need it to be. A little extra, maybe a little extra length. There's still a couple things on this harness that aren't going to be perfect just because I don't have the components here. Like I was saying, I don't have the old pressure sending location exactly. I'm just building a kind of mock up for that. So, um, here, 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 and then dunk, boom. So that. is the oil pressure sensor harness. Then, we're still, of course, this is obviously bound to get tangled at some point, but if you're doing wiring, you're used to that. <laughs> um, then there is also the oil temp. So there's that, that can just be pretty much exactly the same length as this, honestly. Just cut them both there. Awesome. Put them back in here where they are going to go. And even this is kind of tedious, guys. I mean, let's be honest, like... This is not going to be like the most entertaining video ever because I'm doing it long form specifically because people have asked me to do it long form. So you're going to see every minute of this. <laughs> just kidding. There's going to be a couple points where I just clip out some stuff. Obviously, there's only so much you need to see of the same stuff, right? Um, cheese and crackers. Anyway, so we got... There we are. Alright, and we have the alternator. It's just a little shorter. Sorry, as I wave this knife everywhere. <laughs> So that's plugging in here. Do, 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 do. Luckily we can go underneath this, that's nice. Coming around with all the same ones. And I'm gonna tape these all together real quick on this end. Just so we have a consistent little nodule here. And obviously this isn't going to tell us everything that we want to know about the harness because we're going to have to plant layers and all that kind of stuff. But this will get us decent, a decent idea. Quick, just a quick stretch 
and pull. There we go. Bird just flew by. I live kind of out in the country. Um, so again, that's going to go up here. Somewhere real close to there. So, got those. Don't need that because this car is going to be dry sumped. The oil level. So we'll have a flat bottom pan. We do need... Cam sensors. Hopefully I got enough twine here. <laughs> so a cam sensor in the same vicinity here. There's all the rest of this stuff. And obviously I this is where you're gonna have to start thinking a little too because you're gonna have to see where your major split points are, right? Obviously you can format a harness multiple different ways as far as where all the branches are. So, you know, I, right now I have to consider, I've got, you know, all the things I've got over here. I've got the throttle, I've got four injectors. The coil packs are kind of going to be on their own uh, section of harness because these are dumb coils. I don't know why any auto manufacturer still uses dumb coils, but whatever, it's Ford. Uh, <laughs> so we have to use uh, Holly four channel igniters. So those are gonna go to the igniter. So those won't be part of the consideration, but um, you know, I've got four injectors, I've got two cam sensors, alternator, oil pressure, oil temperature, all in this section. So I've got to, I've got to think about where I'm going to put that split point, where where that those branches are, are going to come off. Do I want to do some of them in one location and some of them in another? Do I want to branch them all off from the same location? Uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, because that will kind of dictate where your mock-up harness goes. So, I guess, you know, if you want to be extra safe, you can run everything individually to the firewall connector as far as your your mock-up twine pieces go and then kind of just tape them all together where you want to branch them out i guess that's probably what i'll do is i will do an individual line to every single component and then i will kind of figure out where i want to tape them up and and make the branch points at and then tape it everything together from there so that i have you know an accurate representation of what the and harness is going to be formatted like. So, we just... <laughs> love it, love it. Um, we'll just continue here then. Try to lay everything up, again, as accurately as possible here. Come on now. Losing my knife on these. Oh, just kidding. It's in my pocket. There's that. I might not have enough twine to do that. So this roll, roll was like four bucks at Walmart, actually. Um, so it's cheap stuff. It's not like you're using ton of uh, resources doing this stuff but see I don't I don't think I want to branch them like right here because then this this is very short and I don't tend to like like really short leads like that I'd rather have a little more room in the lead I'll probably just do two main branches at the back of the heads that kind of split off and go to everything, even though that gives you more like individual insulation and that kind of stuff to do. Um, I think in general, it's, it's cleaner. So that's what I'm leaning towards right now, but we will see.
that one. I think I'm gonna need to go get another bolt for this stuff. Um, like I said, coils, not necessarily. We'll build kind of a separate mock-up for that. Oh boy, that's gonna be a mess. <laughs> but injectors, each individual injector. Boy, we're getting a little crazy now, aren't we? So Again, this is where I'm probably gonna cut it off here in a second because I think you get the gist. I don't think you need to see me do every single strand here. Yeah, because it only makes sense. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to have enough twine to do this all exactly, so. Also, I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but I'm pretty much going to... Since there's two firewall connectors, the harness will pretty much be divided by bank. So that bank will be on one firewall connector and this bank will be on the other firewall connector. Uh, obviously a few things, you know, like the cam sensors and that kind of stuff will be in one harness versus the other harness, but roughly that's how it's gonna be divided. See, it starts getting a little crazy here. And, and you know, maybe some other method works for you, right? Maybe you just like the measuring method and that's good enough, or maybe you want to run them all together at different branch locations and kind of make a little more general mock up harness. You know, whatever works. This is just my thing and what seems to work for me. Uh, and what I think is best, but you're welcome to branch out. <laughs> no, I, 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 again, I'm not, uh, I'm not a super mega expert. I'm sure there are other dudes that do it other ways that are very successful. So, and one more injector on this side. Oh, I think I will have enough for one of the harnesses, so that works. One of the firewall connectors, I think I'm all enough to create those. So, cam sensor. I guess I should probably figure out which harness, I have it written down, which harness has the cam sensors in it before I go taping these all together. All right, so anyway, 
I'm gonna cut it off right there for now. And when I start the video back up, I will have one of the banks done, one of the banks mock-up harnesses done so I can show you kind of the complete thing. Okay, so as you can see here, I have one half of the mock-up harness ready to go. Um, and so I need to measure all these. I labeled them as I went. As you can see, it's kind of a, it's kind of a mess. It's kind of a tangle. Like I said, everything is a little tedious, but it's all here. And then <clears throat> I want to point out here that I had some mistakes in here um, because I am using because one ECU connector is going to go to one firewall connector and one ECU connector is going to go to the other firewall connector. And I only have so many pins per per firewall connector. You know, I had to do some uh, moving around the different components, right? But when I went back through them, I realized that, hold on a second, this is connector A to firewall connector A. That doesn't have a temperature sensor in it, you know, like, cause there's two, there's two temperatures on this connector and there's two temperatures in this connector. So you have to, you know, you can only do two here. Otherwise you have crossover wires and I don't want any of that stuff. So um, just be aware of that kind of stuff, you know, build redundancies into your system. I think that's kind of like really what I'm trying to get a, the general gist of a lot of these videos and a lot of stuff, a lot of the tips that I'm giving you, or a lot of the things that I'm telling you is to reinforce the fact that you really need to build a system, uh, like a, a proceed, a system of procedures to where you're always double or triple checking yourself, you know, because obviously that's what you don't want, right? That's everyone's nightmare is that they build this harness and then they're like excited and they put it in the car and you twist the key and something starts smoking or things aren't working and you're trying to like run back through and diagnose it. And you know, you're having all, that's exactly what you're trying to avoid, right? By building your own harness in the first place, rather than, trying to cut something else up or use somebody else's harness. So, you know, even I, I'm, I'm, I still catch myself, you know, oh, hey, hold on a second. Uh, this, this, this connector can't have three temperatures in it. it. That has to go over here. So I'm gonna have to take something from this side and move it back. There's a couple of, of threads <laughs> in here that uh, I'm not actually gonna use because they don't actually belong in this harness. So, uh, yeah, I just want to make that point again. Always, always, always be double and triple checking yourself when you're building something like this, because that is going to guarantee that you have a harness that you take to your car and you connect in and it works. And that is something that you can be proud of then. You know, you don't have to <laughs> feel that shame and embarrassment of, oh, wow, I just spent x amount of time building this harness and it's not correct so obviously even more important if you're working if you're building it for somebody else you know that's you know that's even more important because then wow you know you got they got to send it back to you or you got to build them a new one or something so uh now i'm going to start measuring all the lengths that i have here uh in this connector a harness so that i can get everything down and then start cutting some wire. And um, mocking up my layers, right? Because of the amount of components that use shielded wire in this, uh, the twists are gonna be a little unconventional. You know, they can't just start with one wire and wrap it with six wires. You know, I have to do some, some kind of moving around of things to make sure I get a nice tight bundle. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm just going to measure these with a good old fashioned tape measure. Um, wow, that is a little rusty. <laughs> this might've been caught in the rain a couple times. Uh, totally readable still though, just clean it off. Again, I like to use metric measurements. I just feel like they're more precise. So I bought a metric tape measure 
you could even use a tape roll for this obviously whatever you want to use is totally cool as long as you just get accurate measurements down and then again you're going to want to add you know any at least 10 percent to the length to you know make up for the amount of twist that you're putting in the in the thing so the the length does go up as you go as layers right so you know your first layer you gotta think it's it's running pretty straight pretty parallel you're just twisting it a little bit but your outside layer if you're really getting to a big bulky harness let's say you have five layers in your harness if you know that fifth layer that thing has to go all the way around the you know the circumference or the diameter of that harness so that there's more length that it has to cover there so again you kind of want to um you know it's always better too long than too short right because at the end of the day before you pin on the connectors on the ends of the harness things you can go out there and you can connect everything up and you can go oh wow this is way too long that's fine you know you trim it back and you're good but if you go out there and go oh this doesn't reach <laughs> yeah you're out of luck you have to build an extension a little extension connector harness or something like that and that's a lot less clean and less professional and less ideal obviously so always add 10 to 20 percent you know if you want to be extra safe you could add 20 percent length that's quite a lot but um yeah you just want to do that so i'm not going to bore you with uh showing me manually measuring all these and writing all the measurements down uh but that is essentially the last step of the planning process besides mocking up twists and layers um so there's not a lot more to this video that i really need to show you uh the layers again is a trial and error thing um you know this one i have five shielded cables in this one i have two sh shielded cables in so those are going to be um trial and error i'm just gonna have to see what works obviously i'll show you that in the construction video because that's part of the construction and, and again obviously these i try to separate these videos into different parts uh, just because obviously they can get quite long as my concentric twisting video is, you know, but, uh, obviously everything bleeds into each other, right? Like there's still going to be things that, you know, as far as like planning, like I don't know, um, all of the sizes of DR25 I'm going to use at this point. Right. But that's not going to stop me from starting construction of the harness because, for most of the harness, uh, you're doing that at the very last section. You know, you're sliding everything over the harness and heat shrinking it from there and then going out to the ends where you finally pin the connectors after you do all that. But, so th there's always some extra, you know, planning, whatever, it all bleeds together. You always gotta be conscious of what you're doing. You always have to be thinking about, oh, is this gonna be here? Obviously you don't wanna like, you're running the harness, you know, say the, between the, um, between the ECU connector and the firewall connector, you know, you don't want to be just running wires, plugging them in here, twisting them, plugging them in here. You got to put the heat shrink on it, right? <laughs> it's a classic, classic for getting the heat shrink. Um, so, you know, just always be mindful, always be kind of, you know, really methodical, as you go through planning, as you go through construction, uh, that I think that's the biggest thing. It's the biggest thing that's gonna determine your success in building a harness of this caliber or this level because that's the thing that the professionals really have down to a T, you know? And again, like the professionals are using software and they're calculating out twist diameters and like all that kind of stuff. They have a lot of, there's a lot of technology that's out there that's available for you to use if you want to. But at the end of the day, I think you can be just as, as successful or, you know, it might take you a little longer or something, but you can just, you know, as long as you're 
taking those steps to ensure that you're not getting ahead of yourself or you're not um, missing anything in the planning process, then you're going to be fine. So, um, Maven Performance, by the way, is who makes uh, this little firewall plate and it's kind of nice they include uh they include the little printout of the connector with all the slots so that you can you know you can plan out you can write it all down um i'm obviously going to transfer these all to excel files um but yeah i'd say that's all for this video and i will see you in the construction video next and I hope you have a fantastic day.